Welcome to Divine Mercy Parish as we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, number 422, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day, the moon shines full My friends, welcome to our celebration of Eucharist. We gather as God's people in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. We hear today this gospel of Jesus taking, uh, moving to the desert for a moment to uh, pray, to continue his ministry. In our busy lives, we need time in a, in a desert experience for ourselves to pray, to reflect, to reconnect with our God. So we now then pause to reflect on God's goodness, God's mercy, and God's forgiveness that guides us to express our faith each day. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins, we come to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you said at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Receive our prayer. You are seated. 
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, they come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, my soul, who heals the broken hearted. Bless the Lord, my soul, who heals the broken hearted. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, chant praises to is sure and blessed are your children bless the lord my soul who heals the broken hearted all praise to you O gracious god your goodness fills the and gather all your lost ones. Bless the Lord, my soul, who heals the broken hearted. You heal the hurt and broken heart. You bind up every of night and call each one by name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who heals the broken hearted. The peace of God shall be your hope, God's finest wheat your food. The word of God fills all the earth as rapid as the whirlwind. Bless the Lord, my soul, who heals the broken hearted.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak. To win over the weak, I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed with demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. And rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into the synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. As we heard last, in last Sunday's Gospel, Jesus begins going through the towns and villages to different synagogues, teaching and preaching, and also healing. And as today's Gospel opens, he's at Simon's house, and Simon's mother-in-law is, is ill. After Jesus cures her, they then, the people then begin to bring more and more people to the door to be cured. Now notice what happens next. This is amazing, I think. Jesus gets up early in the morning to go off to a deserted place to pray. Madison says, why why does he do that? 
Well, I think as we look at this, the gospel in the context of, 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 this, of his time, he's been teaching, he's been preaching, he's been healing, and he really needs to reconnect with God to guide him to continue that ministry. If Jesus needs that time away, the time for solitude, the time of prayer, the time of reconnecting with God or communing with God, I think we do as well. As you know, this has been a very, very difficult year for all of us. And yet this up, up, upcoming season of Lent could be for us a time for us to step back and in some solitude and prayer, really reconnect with our God, commune with our God, to give us strength to carry on. We begin Lent, obviously, with Ash Wednesday coming up in a, few, in a, a week and a half. And so I would like us maybe we think about today using our time of Lent as a time of solitude, maybe our deserted place, so to speak. We find some time to really pray additional, time, additional times, to maybe take more time in Scripture, but to do what Jesus does, to reconnect with God, to recommune with God, that we can, again, be re-energized to go forth and live our faith. We see what happens after Jesus leaves the desert. He then teaches, he preaches, and heals again. Those experiences for Jesus re-energize him, help him to continue his ministry. We need help to continue our call to discipleship, that our faith is lived daily, that we celebrate our faith daily, and that we take time to care for other people. That takes energy, that takes uh, commitment, and I think it could be easy to be, to be burned out if we don't take time in solitude to go back in prayer, to go back in faith, to let God guide us and strengthen us in our ministry as, as uh, in our call of discipleship. This call to discipleship is one we receive at baptism. It's one that really we're called to live daily. We're called to live daily trusting that God walks with us. But how often in our daily lives do we take time to recognize that God is by our side, that God is with us? Sometimes we are so busy, we almost feel that we're alone. Sometimes we're so busy that we kind of almost go on autopilot and do things automatically, maybe not even thinking or, or feeling what we're doing. The time to get away, the time of solitude, the time of so, the so-called desert experience, is a time for us to recommit ourselves to our ministry, recommit ourselves to our call to be disciples, and let God guide us and be re-energized to do that. As I said at the beginning of this homily, we've all had some difficult times this past year, uh, whether caring for sick, sick loved ones, maybe burying loved ones who have died, uh, maybe just living in fear at times of what's gonna happen next. I believe that this gospel invites us to reconnect with our God in prayer, to be re-energized by God, to overcome those fears, to give us strength to, in fact, help those who need help, uh, to give comfort for those who are, who are sick or dying, and that we become full of the Lord's presence in, in, in Jesus Christ to live our faith, to let our faith console us, to let our faith strengthen us, to let our faith guide us in how we live, how we treat people, and especially as, as how we're going through this pandemic, which I think is going on longer than anyone hoped for or expected. So my friends, today, in today's gospel, Jesus takes some time apart, apart from the crowds, apart from his disciples, to be with God. He takes some time apart to really pray, to deepen his relationship with God, and to be re-energized to go forth and to teach and preach and heal. We need that same time in our lives, the time to get away, so to speak, the time apart that we can pray, commune with our God, be re-energized by God in our faith to then go out, let our faith be expressed in our care and love for other people. So my friends, let us take some, some time this week then to reflect on, do we have that place and time in our, in our lives each day or each week, but each day hopefully, to have some solitude, to have some time with God, to let God re-energize us, to let God strengthen us in our discipleship. Um, and maybe if we don't have that time, Maybe to reflect on, can we, can we carve out some time to do that? If Jesus needs that time, I think especially we need, we, we need that, that as well. Let us pause for a few moments as a quiet time, then to open our hearts and spirits to what we hear in the gospel. 
Jesus is taking some time apart from his disciples and from his ministry to pray, to be strengthened in his ministry, to, to help him know that God is with him, guiding him, and to, -commune with, to commune with God and be energized by God. Today, let's do the same thing. So let us pause then to allow, this, allow God to be part of our lives and commit ourselves then to taking some time apart to pray, to commune with God, to be energized by God whose love and mercy and forgiveness strengthen us each day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, for whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was according to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has set into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come, amen. God has blessed us with a gift of life, and so we know he will hear our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may announce the good news that there is meaning, purpose, and value in every life because of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those called to leadership in the world, that they work diligently to raise people from slavery in all its forms, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they will pursue justice, truth, and the common good in the light of God's law, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For women who are victims of violence, that they may be protected by society and aided in their sufferings, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are hopeless and in despair, that they turn to God to bring light to their darkness and hope to their hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those chronically ill, that they may know the healing, friendship, and strength, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, strength for healthcare workers, and hope in global vaccination for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For faith of departed loved ones, especially Gene Coleman, Thomas Tribbett, and Steve Bamel, that they rest in the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the names and intentions written in our parish book of prayers, and for the intentions we hold now in the silence of our hearts. We pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And for the attention of all parishioners when this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, Father of peace, and free us from the troubles of fear and doubt. May your power within us give us the courage to be signs of the greatness of your mercy, justice, and love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have a few announcements for this week. This year, Ash Wednesday is February 17th. Our Ash Wednesday services are as follows. 8.30 a.m. that morning at St. Michael Church and St. Peter Church. 5 o'clock p.m. again at St. Michael and St. Peter Churches. 7 o'clock p.m. at St. Anne and St. Joseph Churches. Our Knights of Columbus will be holding their annual Friday fish dinners during Lent. The dinners will begin on Friday, February 19th, and are carry out only. It will cost $10 each. There will be limited numbers of d d uh, dinners each week, so please come if you can to support our parish, but especially support our Knights by doing a carry out fish dinner on Friday, the Fridays of Lent. Our parish office is asking all, that all parishioners submit email, address to, a, a, email addresses to update our records. We'll only use your email address for parish-related communications and will not give your email out, address out to anyone. If you currently receive emails, you do not need then to, res to resend your email address. Tax statements have been sent to all contributors of Divine Mercy Parish. If you've not yet received your tax statement in the mail by next, this week, by next week, please call our parish office. Let's say I want to thank you again for your continued financial support of our parish. As I mentioned in my homily, this has gone on, this pandemic has gone on, I think, a lot longer than we thought was going to be happening. I'm very grateful to all of you for your continued sending in your, your donations uh, by mail or having maybe switched to uh, electronic giving. But thank you again uh, for your contributions to our parish, which help us to obviously pay our bills, to pay our staff, and to keep our programs going. So again, please thank you very much for your financial support of to my Divine Mercy Parish. I truly and greatly appreciate it. As our gifts are being prepared, please join in singing number 678, Healing River of the Spirit. Now pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We 
We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in your mercy redeemed him through Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. By our voice we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willing to his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once we're giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, my Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Through the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And yeah, with your spirit. spirit. Let's take some time now and offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We now say our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive your body and blood at Mass, please give me the faith to know that you are always within me. Come into my heart today, and never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we, that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that may one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit to the salvation of, the, of our world. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended here. Let us go forth in peace and joy to always love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week. You too, Father. Thank you. As we go forth to take the gospel to the world, please join in singing number 598, Let All Things Now Living. Light in.